creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it. Your the tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. This is so sick! It likes you! The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion. Suddenly, there is silence. The invertebrate comes back to life, stridulating. Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem, on either side of the insect's small head. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth. Along, you were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. Whoa! Maybe it's poison? Fucking hell! The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst. I need this. What he's like for you. Then I will tell you what he's like for me. What is your illness? For me, it is not like that. I have states, not the emotions. For example, I experience excitement and unexpected sugar rewards, but that is not important. Now I will tell you how it is for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness, being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations. A swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. 
I am at the end of an era funnel. Weightless. So light. It only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. sure? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced the missing antenna. Yes, the leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. Yes, Thankfully someone ate it. The next time I mold it, I grew an antenna again. I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insulindia Isuma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, combing myself. Unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. No one unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Sussurin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolution, district of Martinez, March 51. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. We should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. No, you're awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semi chemicals. What were you born to detect? detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years, I dithered out of sight. Trapped myself in greenery. No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand. No. You are the miracle. It was you, coming from the west. From the whirling. You were coming. The moral of our encounter is... I am a relatively medium life form. While well, you were extreme. All engulfing madness. A volatile semen nervous system. Ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. 
You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day, or just forget? Close your eyes and sign, and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Doesn't look like you're spazzing out. Kuno knows all about seizures. You're just staring at the giant insect. Cool. So is Kuno. Kuno's also having a vision of a giant insect, and it's real. Back off before it eats you. No. You are the miracle. It was you, coming from the West. The moral of our encounter is... I am a relatively medium life form. The pale too came with you. It is a nervous shadow cast into the world. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat. Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day, or just forget? Please be. Or oh, one day, one of you will close your eyes and sign, and open them to see that none of this ever existed. No, there is one more. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. For freedom. You cannot lie to me. Behind you, it smells of fires. So awfully far you were prepared to go in her presence. And it. She was held on earth. It doesn't take a three meters thick insect to tell you that. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements. Stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. And just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror, like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone! Between those reeds there! Fucking elegant! The fuck? Is that ceramic? And more stuff, like a nest in the reeds? We should peep it. Fucking hell! What now? Yeah, Grandpa's not looking so good. We need to check on him. 